All right. Police brutality, combat wombat, back again. From an early, early age, I had a big neon sign above my head that I think only the police could read. It said, arrest me now. <laughs> um, yeah, they can smell me from a mile away. Um, you know, they drove past me, they'd do a U-turn on the street. I think, I don't know, they must be able to sense that disregard for authority. Um, yeah, a mile off. But anyway, so I had numerous run-ins over the years and um, I guess some of the more harder ends of the, the stick I saw were out in the desert, you know, Beverly uranium mine, um, the Big Creek cops uh, were always nasty, um, you know, they, they brought in Star Force, I remember, to, at Beverly in 2000 to beat the crap out of everybody. Um, but also, you know, we had a lot of like random incidences, you know, on the roadside and, um, you know, trying to do direct action out in the middle of nowhere. The police think no one's looking and can do what they like. But, you know, they also do that in the city and, you know, I've witnessed a lot of police brutality happen, um, yeah, here in the streets of Melbourne as well. You know, things like G20 and, um, you know, back alleys and, you know, they certainly target um, minority groups and you know I've, I've witnessed firsthand um, you know what the police are capable of and some really nasty stuff. Uh, yeah ma'am for uh, all of those who are wondering how the beat was made uh, it was made on my old emu sampler um, it was a drum machine there's an emu sp12 or an emu sp1200 drum machine out of uh, the mid to late 80s, one of the first sampling drum machines. Very punchy, 12-bit, lo-fi madness. And the little harmonica line or the sort of melodica line was me playing the melodica. Uh, and I, actually, I played it through a telephone that a friend of mine, Cav, the drummer for Mutiny, the punk sort of folk band Mutiny, uh, who we, we were living with, for some of a period of making the whole combat one minute album, uh, and sound system, uh, he, uh, yeah, he'd made this mic and it was a, a phone with a mic cable and we could plug it into a mixer. And that really was the whole sound for that. I mean, um, yeah, the melodica was recorded through that and my singing, which was that whole like police brutality. It's a reality. That was recorded through it too. That's that lo-fi kind of megaphone effect that was recorded through that. And yeah, I actually, you know, come to think of it, that that actual line, that particular part of the song, that little sort of pre-chorus or whatever you want to call it, I remember having that melody in my head for a while and then I remember actually coming up with the words that matched the melody while I was in my old veggie oil van turning onto um, Alexander Parade from Brunswick Street in Fitzroy, Melbourne. <laughs> Funnily enough, I don't know why I remember that. And uh, and then I remember I had just had to get it down, so I just wanted, I think I just went and recorded it straight on with this, this phone just to get the idea down. And I love that sound so much that when we ended up recording it properly, I used the phone again. There's, a, there's actually a guy in the background, I'm not too sure if you can really hear him, but it was Ozzy Battler. Ozzy Battler was in town and he came into the studio and sung a little bit of that background behind, you know, um, sponsors by, multi, yeah, sponsored by multinational forces, get those animals off those horses. That's him in the background. And I remember he was really, really, really hung over that day and I struggled to get him to the studio. I think he was supposed to come to the studio at like 10 a.m. and I think by the time he got there, it was like three or four or five and he couldn't do much. And that was about all I got out of him. Because <laughs> um, we were recording actually at two really good friends of mine's studio at the time uh, in the container studio which was a, another shipping container studio like my studio here in fact it was one of the influences behind me building a shipping container studio and that was run by pip norman uh, as in count bounce seed mc from tzu and uh tristan um and they were both uh 
key parts and actually recording all of this stuff as well. When I first wrote uh, the chorus for Police Brutality, which was um, sponsored by multinational forces, get those animals off those horses, um, that particular line was inspired by the protests at S11. And S11 was a massive demonstration um, against globalisation at the Crown Casino. And we surrounded the whole of the Crown Casino with a um, you know, huge human blockade. Uh, me and Monkey and a whole lot of crew had just driven down from Darwin, um, fish and chip oil all the way, and arrived in Melbourne just in time for uh, S11. And, you know, we had the big nuclear um, barrel, uh, we had the solar powered sound system, and we were doing, um, yeah, lots of music in the street. Uh, and the police came in, you know, brutally they were trampling people, punching people in the head, crushing people with horses. Um, at one point I even saw a, a undercover police car run over a protester and they didn't stop. They just dragged her body under the car and kept going and then sped off. So, you know, it was certainly a hot spot um, for police brutality. And it was on the last day that I was walking around the casino that was kind of more like a war zone than a city street. And I saw a massive, big, like, concrete bollards that they had surrounding the um, casino. And on it was written, get those animals off those horses. And behind that concrete bollard were rows of police on horses. And that was such an iconic image you know it's stuck in my mind um until this day it's one of those things that like when you hear it like i've been to protests these days and and um i've heard people shout it out at the cops so the music video for police brutality was um put together by a dragonfly um animation production crew um yeah they they heard the song and volunteered their time to um yeah make it happen so i drew a few pictures and yeah they brought it to life and then we got dj wasabi scratching um i think it's something about the new south wales police their laws cover their own ass or whatever yeah so that was um DJ Wasabi on the cuts. In the early 2000s, there was a mass um, anti-globalisation movement began and uh, people were congregating um, and protesting at, on a mass level at the different um, big you know, G8 summits um, all over Europe and you know, also here in Australia. Um, I was in Europe um, during the time um, when there was a, a massive one in Sweden and in Bonn and in, in Genoa in Italy. Uh, the police were exceptionally violent, people were killed by the police um, and I was uh, deported from Sweden um, during the Gothenburg protest. But um, I pretended I was English and ended up getting deported to London, so that was handy. Because <laughs> um, I just uh, really arrived in Europe only a few weeks before. I was actually hitchhiking to London from um, Amsterdam when I got picked up by a bus of punks um, going to Sweden uh, for the G8 summit. And so I jumped aboard and met a whole lot of really cool Dutch and Italian crew. And we ended up in Sweden uh, at a big school that was hosting the Alternative Forum. <laughs> Is that what I sound like? Ah, uh -huh. yes. And then we were all inside the school when the police decided to surround the whole school with shipping containers with riot police on each shipping container. Because early later that day the bush demonstration was coming past and... Um, I guess they didn't want our contingency joining. So um, inside the school there's people from all over Europe and all over the world. And um, there was Black Block, there was Yabasta, the there was, you know, all sorts. So there was only one spot where they hadn't left a shipping container and we tried to barge our way out uh, with Yabasta in the front, everyone else in the middle and Black Block in the back. 
Um, there was lots of cobblestones thrown, and um, <laughs> I think I even got hit in the head with a cobblestone at one point while trying to film. Um, but we ended up getting pushed back into the school where we barricaded ourselves in. And it was at that point, after many meetings, that we decided that as the bush demonstration was coming through, a couple of us were going to make a break for it. So I think it was me and a few guys from Germany. Um, we made a run for it, and as I climbed up on the shipping container, um, I looked up and there, um, standing on my fingers, was a right cop. Um, luckily some of the guys made it over and managed to stage dive off the shipping containers into the crowd. But um, I wasn't so lucky and I got put on the bus and taken to the, to the detention centre. But um, it was the detention centre actually turned out to be a pretty cool place to be because uh, they had computers and they had internet and the police had already raided the indie media that were supposed to be putting out the media for the protest. But in the detention centre, um, we had people speaking 20 different languages and doing media directly from there um, and getting the message out to the world what was going down in Gothenburg that week. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, really? <laughs> um, so, yeah, at one point in the Reclaim the Streets in Gothenburg, police opened fire. Um, the, on the crowd and a few people were shot. I think people, one guy even died later on. Um, yeah, and that was the start of a, a really intense season for the anti-globalisation movement um, and quite a few other protesters died after that in Europe. So, yeah, it was in the detention centre in Sweden that I wrote the first verse for police brutality. Uh -huh. And what else happened? Is that it? I think so. <laughs> Ciao for now.